Hello, Mrs. Stevens here, and I'm talking about aggregate demand. I'm following the learning objectives that I wrote for this chapter, and I'm going to be covering the first four bullet points on the learning objectives. The first bullet point says to list three important macro macroeconomic indicators that fluctuate together. And so when we're looking at the economy, uh, the real gross domestic product measures the size of the economy and also tells us whether we're in a recession or not. If we're in a recession, then as you know, when a re real gross domestic product decreases, indicating we're in a recession, unemployment increases. And those things always work together. So those are the first two things that fluctuate together. And then the third thing that fluctuates is, uh, might be a little bit surprising, investment spending. This is one component of the real gross domestic product. And whenever we have a recession, the component that decreases the most is investment spending or business spending. So these are the, the three components that always fluctuate together when the economy is growing or shrinking. All right, now our next bullet point there is to explain the importance of classical macroeconomic theory in this chapter. And so here we are. Changes in the money supply affect the economy in the short run, but not in the long run. So in the long run, we're looking at uh, mostly things like growth in resources and uh, factors that affect aggregate demand for goods and services, consumers, businesses, government, and not the money supply. The money supply is just something that will uh, boost things one way or another in the short run. It's just a, we learned about the money supply in the last chapter and, um, and how the Federal Reserve Bank uses the money supply in order to uh, help the economy either during inflation or recession. But in the long run, the money supply is not going to impact the long-term growth of the economy. And then the fourth bullet point, or I'm sorry, the third bullet point, is to describe the short-run model of ADAS. So we're going to draw ourselves a graph here. On the x-axis, we have real gross domestic product. That's what we're measuring, uh, more or less gross domestic product. On the y-axis, we have the price level and this could be the GDP deflator. That's the most commonly used measure to uh, measure the price level. Aggregate demand here is the relationship between real gross domestic product and the price level. Aggregate demand is downward sloping and it represents all of the goods and services that are demanded in the economy. So this is everything. This is not just one thing like corn or cell phones. This is the demand for all goods and services. So we're looking at factors that can influence the demand as a whole. So how does the whole economy change its mind as to whether to buy more goods and services? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this chapter here. So the downward sloping AD curve represents that. We're going to be looking at how it shifts out or how it shifts in. And then we also have a short run supply curve, aggregate supply, that's upward sloping. But more importantly even is we have a vertical long run aggregate supply curve. So this is kind of hard to read here. but. Long run aggregate supply is vertical. We will talk about long run and short run aggregate supply a little bit later. Now let's take a look at the last bullet point, the last of the four that we're covering in this tutorial. List the four components that contribute to the aggregate demand, oops, aggregate demand for goods and services. And so you know this formula. This is the formula for gross domestic product. So we're going to fill in the blanks here. The first one is consumption. The second one is investment or business spending. And we have 
government expenditures, and net exports. So these are the four components that contribute to the aggregate demand for goods and services.